Hello, welcome back to part two um, of the work solutions for the P1 paper from the October-November 2019, um, and it's paper 13. Okay, so we are up to question. Question eight is about functions, and we've got a function f being defined for x greater than half, and we're told about f dash of x, so the derivative of x. Um, we're not told f of x itself. We want to find the set of values of x for which f is decreasing. Now, if the function is decreasing, it means the gradient is negative. So we take that gradient function we've been given, we make it less than zero, and we work through the solutions to that. We end up with x being less than 5 over 2. Now, this last little bit, I'm not sure if it's going to actually be something that's worth something in the mark scheme. Um, time will tell. But since f of x is defined for... Um, uh, x greater than half, we do have a limit on the bottom end of things. So f is decreasing when x is between half and 5 over 2. I'm not sure if you'll need this last bit for the marks. You might be okay with just this since x was defined in the question as being greater than a half, but I would put it there just to be sure. Okay, so it's now given that um, f of 1 is minus 3, so find f of x. So if we integrate the derivative, then we will get f of x. So I'm doing the integration here using a bit of a guess and check method. So if we try raising that power by 1 and then differentiate, we can check it does get to the thing that we want it to be. So the integral is then 2x minus 1 to the 3 over 2, minus 6x, and then plus a constant, and that's where we're going to use the f1 equals minus 3 to work out the constant. So plug that in, we can work out that c is 2, and our final answer of f of x is down here. Okay, question 9 is about geometric progression, and again, I feel like this is a question that's put in a slightly odd way. There's a few questions in this paper that are a little bit different to the norm. So we've got um, the progression in terms of k's here. Now, in, in other papers, you might have seen them as x's um, or just simply as numbers. But the geometric progression means that the ratio between um, a term and the, the one that comes after it is the same every time. So the ratio is always the a term divided by the term that came before it. So we can do that for the second divided by the first term and then also the third divided by the second term here. And we know that that ratio will be equal. So then we can work through the algebra there to get the expression that was required in the question. So now continuing with that expression, we carry on and find the values of k. So factorizing gives us uh, that k could be 6 over 7 or 6. Now with those values of k, we need to work out what the common ratio is when k is equal to those. So we can put that ratio into what we had in the top here. So this um, ratio that we've got here. Um, we can put that in here. So when k is 6 over 7, the ratio is minus 2 thirds. When k is 6, the ratio is 4 thirds. And then part 3. One of these ratios gives a progression which is convergent. Now the rules for progressions to converge is that the ratio, or rather the modulus of the ratio, has to be less than 1. So the ratio itself has to be between minus 1 and 1. So that's this one here. We had um, our options of minus two thirds or four thirds. Four thirds would be bigger than one, so that's not going to work. Um, now to get the ratio of minus two thirds, k is six over seven. So now we put those values into our sum to infinity formula and we get the answer 54 over 35. Now question 10 is our vectors question and I think it's quite a nice vectors question, this one, fairly straightforward. So find a of x, first of all. That's just regular vector stuff. Show that a, x, and b is a straight line. So if it's a straight line, another way of saying that is that they're collinear. And if they're collinear, then one will be a multiple of the other. So we've already worked out a, x. Now we work out a, b, and we state that one is a multiple of the other. Then we're given a point C. We're told that CX is perpendicular to AX. You can draw yourself a little picture if it helps, or you might have um, 
you know, it, it was on a double page, so it helps when you're writing this out properly rather than looking at it on a screen. So C of X, uh, sorry, C to X is going to be this vector here. We're told that it's perpendicular to A, um, AX, or sorry, rather, we're asked to show that it's perpendicular. We do that by doing the scalar product. The scalar product comes out to zero, and when the scalar product is zero, we know that the vectors are perpendicular. Then we want to find the area of triangle ABC. Now we're told that CX is perpendicular to AX and AB is on a straight line. So we have this property here um, with our um, triangle. And we've got the height of the triangle there because we were told that that was perpendicular. So now all we need to do is half base times height and we get the um, base and the height by doing the modulus of the vectors. All right, question 11, last one. All right, so we've got this diagram. Um, it's a kind of tricky curve to work with because of the power to minus 2. We're told that that line here was a normal to the curve, meaning that it crosses at um, 90 degrees to the curve, or that the, um, the gradient uh, is the negative reciprocal of the gradient of the curve at that point. Okay, so show that the normal AB has this equation. So basically find the equation of the normal. So the uh, we, if we differentiate Y, then we get this. And then we know that at A, X is 2. So the gradient of the curve at A is minus 2. That means the gradient of the normal will be the negative reciprocal. So that's a half. Then just using our equation of a line um, formula, um, we can put in the coordinates of 2, 3 and the gradient of a half and show that that gets us the equation that we're looking for. Okay, now, big A marker to finish off. So find the volume of revolution. Now, volume of revolution means we are going to, if we just go back to this diagram, we're going to find this section here and this section here um, in two pieces. So we're going to go 1 to 2 and 2 to 3 because the 1 to 2 we need to do as being under the line of the normal and the 2 to 3 we need to do as being under the line of the curve here. Okay, so we're going to use those two equations, um, one that we were given and the one that we worked out in part 1 um, here. And actually you were given it in part 1 as well, so you could go on and do part 2 even if you hadn't got part 1. So volume of revolution is to integrate pi, pi y squared. So if we put in y for the first part and y for the second part and then continue that integration through, there's quite a lot of spaces to make mistakes here, so you have to be very careful. And then, and you can see at the side here, I've even done a little bit of scribbling to try and make my expansion a bit easier. Um, but if you carry on those steps through here, you can... Um, follow through those uh, processes of doing the so expansion, then integrating, then substituting in limits um, and timesing by pi, simplifying down the answer at the end. Okay, hope that helped and good luck for your stats exam. If you're sitting that, I will follow up with a work solution video for that one as soon as I am able to get my hands on a paper after you sit it.